we have so many places now you can tune in. Of course, we have our ZetaGlobalRadio.com, and now we are on YouTube, and a lot of people are liking us there, and iTunes, and SoundCloud, and SpiritualCommunitiesNetwork.com, and it's telling me a lot. It's telling me that there are many, many people waking up wanting to learn more about who they are, wanting to learn more about energy and the way things work with a higher source and power, whatever you may call that. And in doing so, you go through a transition of learning sort of what you thought was reality and now you learn that there's more to it than that. And so far on this show in the last four years, we've seen a lot of beautiful guests come on and share exactly the tools and the means to uh, be a more enlightened being. So today is no exception because we have Karen Rudolph here who is the author of Five Ways to Create a Ripple. And I hope that you really sit back and enjoy this hour together with Karen and I as we talk about who we are, what it is that we can offer the world in creating a ripple, and how that in tune uh, enlightens ourself. So Karen Rudolph is a change facilitator and personal coach who works with each unique client's own inherent healing powers through twink, Tranquil Solutions, Soul, Soul Solutions, I love that. Courses, workshops, mentoring, one-to-one and group sessions, you'll build a strong reservoir, reservoir of being empowered. So welcome to the show, Karen. It's a thrill to have you here. I can't wait to talk about everything we're going to talk about today. <laughs> Thank you, myself as well. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. And you know what? It's, it's perfect because you sent me an email and said that the book, your book, Five Ways to Create a Ripple, is maybe for people who uh, are new to the path, or I'm putting this in my own words, and you'll be able to explain it further, but more about people I believe are waking up and are just starting to have that. And that's exactly what this show's about. Although we have people who may have been, you know, been walking a path for 40, 50 years, or into the Galactic Federation and go deeper into their higher realms of evolvement. And we have those who are just realizing that there's more to what meets the eye. So you're in great company here, and I can't wait to show uh, the listeners and let them hear all about you and your book. Oh, absolutely. I'd be happy to share that. Um, I started out my career as a nurse and uh, moved down to Florida from up north in New York and had a really nice practice of nursing up there. And when I got down to Florida... Uh, my former husband and I decided to start a family, and one of his requests was that I be a stay-at-home mom. Very fortunate to be able to do that. Uh, and yet, even through all of that, I always felt like there was a little missing inside, a little piece of me that was anxious to get out. And mm-hmm. fast forward, you know, I married thinking I was going to be married for the rest of my life when I said I do. And Lo and behold, life happens, and I ended up uh, divorcing, had given up my nursing career. But one of the things that I had really, um, I had stopped nursing, I was burnt out. I was an oncology nurse last. I had gone through a series of different aspects of nursing. And within the scope of nursing, what was missing for me was I didn't feel that clients and patients were being heard. And they would come in with a diagnosis and without really getting to the bottom core, listening to um, what was causing, it was more like, here's a prescription. Let's just, you know, mask the symptoms in a sense and get on until I see you next via the doctors. And it really bothered me. I hear that so often with guests who are on the show, whether they come from a cancer surviving background or um, a medical profession. I hear that over and over again. So you presencing it on the show right now is really important. So it's perfect that you say that because since I've been in Sarasota, I had an incident for myself down here uh, where I had gone, you know, with all the pollens and such that are here in Florida uh, during season, it actually triggered some asthma. And I went Mm. into one of the emergency centers here and 
the gentleman, the doctor, listened to my lungs, and right off the bat, he says to me, you have congestive heart failure. And I looked at him, and I said to him, no, I don't. I know my body really well, and I'm here because of asthma. It's happened once too often, and I know myself. And he's like, no, you have congestive heart failure. Here's a script. And he literally handed me the script. And I took my hands away, and in the moment, I stepped back, and I said, this is exactly what I'm going to stand for. And I said, let me prove it to you. I will actually pay for the chest x-ray. So I had to take a chest x-ray, and I'm going to prove that I do not have congestive heart failure. And I sat after the chest x-ray for 20 minutes, and I'm feeling very secure in myself. And then as time is ticking, all of a sudden I started getting up into my head. And it's like, oh, my God, what if? Well, who's going to take care of my dog? Who's going to take care of my horses? Who's going to tell my kids? And blah, 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 blah. And all of this stuff started happening in my brain. And I was like, stop, halt. And I took a deep breath, and I really centered myself. And in he walks, and he says to me, you were right. And I said, imagine if, imagine all these people who don't know medicine or don't know their bodies, you've just sentenced them to a life or death sentence. You're kidding. Wow, I thought he would humble himself, at least like give him pause for reflection. Backtracking, you know, back in time. Um, this was, has been my experience while I was working as a nurse. And I was empathetic to a lot of my patients back then to the point where I was literally taking it home and waking up in the middle of the night and I said there's got to be a better way well again as I said you know divorce hit sooner than I anticipated or wasn't anticipating it at all and and um, it was like oh my god what am I going to do with myself the sky is falling and life is falling apart and I have three small children and what am I going to do and how am I going to create income and blah 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 all in my head and I was in my, what I call my pity party. I use that same expression. I've used it for decades. I was so smitten with pity party. It was terrible. And seriously, I, I actually at one point in time, the first time, I'll never forget, the first time my former took the kids, I was hiding behind my kids in the uh, not so great relationship at the time. And um, I remember when the kids left, I actually considered for a moment, a fleeting moment in time, of killing myself. And I was like, whoa, stop. No time out. That's not an option. It was my kids that kept me going. And then as I was moving forward in time, my horse, my second horse uh, got struck by lightning. My first horse got struck by lightning and passed. He was my show horse. He was my rock of Gibraltar. If that horse can talk, I'd be in deep poop. <laughs> Mm. And uh, so I lost, in theory, my best friend. And a few years later, while I was still married, I got a second horse. And he, too, after, during the course of my divorce, got struck by lightning. And the ch- Florida is the lightning capital of the world. And I never thought it would happen to me. You know, I was, why would I be different than anybody else? And um, the thought of it striking twice was devastating for me yeah it immediately made me realize that it's not about me and I immediately put all of my attention and focus on Truman my horse at the time and all I can see was him living and how was I going to have that occur and everything first the first thing I did without even thinking was uh, called all of my friends and I asked them to start praying. And it was just without even a thought. It was just, you know, raise the vibrational energy. And it wasn't until uh, the vet told me, Karen, put him down. He's never going to survive. You're talking, you're getting divorced. It's going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. He, you know, he's probably not going to survive. And I stood in faith. And I just stood in no, no. You know, it's like, who are you to listen to? I am believing and I'm seeing him being whole and healthy. And I drove three and a half hours. We put him, it took us quite a while to put him into the trailer. He was unsteady on his feet. I knew if he fell over, 
in this darkened space, that was the end to him. And I just, the whole way driving up there at two miles, what felt like two miles an hour, was uh, me praying and, and affirming that, no, he, you know, he's whole and complete, whole and complete, whole and complete. And when we got him off the trailer, I remember the vets coming out and the nursing staff and such and going, oh, my God, we've never seen anything like this before. And they asked me to go sit in a, a butterfly conservatory up there in Gainesville and wait for the doctor to assess. And they hooked him up to IV fluids, and he looked like hell on wheels. And I thought, oh, God. And I went into this conservatory, and I continued praying. And all of a sudden, I got a call from the, the vet saying, well, he's stable at the moment, but we want to take out his eye. His eye he had been bashing and attempting to get up, and he's going to lose it. And all of a sudden, a big, giant butterfly landed on my finger. And as I'm looking at that butterfly and I'm on the phone with a vet, I said, no, he's going to see again. Do whatever it takes to have that be. And the vet said to me, but Karen, you're a nurse. You, you know that, you know, they need to be, um, every time you blink, your eye is getting moisture. And if not, it's going to stretch his cornea and it's going to do more damage than good. He'll be rideable. We'll take the eye out. I said, no, you're not listening. Do everything it takes. I don't care what the cost is. Put drops in his eyes. Every 15 minutes, this planned, and we'll take it from there. Fast forward, he became probably, it took him a year to recover. He's now running around like a banshee, and I'll never forget the vet came up to give injections or whatever. In the background of where he was standing, this horse is running around a million miles an hour, and he says, who is that? He said, that's Truman. And he says to me, quote, unquote, call me an asshole. I would never in a million years have believed it. Well, first off, two things I wanted to say. Uh, one, uh, you're, you're really setting up the stage for our show next week because our show next week is actually called From Trauma to Triumph. <laughs> so, uh, thank, so thank you for telling that story. That's incredible. In the... And I'm glad it has a great out, uh, outcome. Did you, I think you pretty much answered what I was going to ask you during that was, were you spiritually awake? Were you aligned? Were you conscious of the power of prayer prior to this whole situation happening? Like when two horses are struck with lightning, are you someone who think, okay, there's a sign, there's something in that there? So I think you answered mostly the question, but... Um, I assuming based on what you said that you were already really consciously aware of how things were, or was this sort of a huge epiphany coming into that? This was, this was a huge epiphany because for me, I remember while I was sitting in the butterfly conservatory, making a promise to the universe and saying I was sexually molested when I was 11 years old. And I promised in that moment you know, you, you always grope for something, please, you know, let me pray and it'll, maybe something will change, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I remember praying yep. and I said, I'm going to create a give back program for children, awareness, creating boundaries and leadership program for children. If Truman gets well, you know, that sort of thing. And it was like, okay, Karen, you know, integrity, you know, keep your progress, promise. So I'm actually in the process of developing that program now fast forward years later, and it takes years to do that. So uh, it took years for me, actually, to do that. But no, I wasn't really spiritually aware. I had an intuitive sense. And to be honest with you, if, I, if I'm going to be honest with myself as well, I, uh, I had a near-death experience in my 20s, and I thought that the experience that I had with that was sort of normal for everybody, and I didn't even think to question it. I never knew how to articulate the, the intuitive, the ESP, and the, my gifts that I had, and I didn't call them gifts. I asserted that it, everybody had it and just didn't talk about it. And my former husband, when we were dating, said to me, Karen, you're freaking me out. Can you turn it off? And I literally thought there was something wrong with me, and I tuned it out. Every time it came up, I tuned it out, tuned it out to the point where I felt like it was something missing for me. So why don't we do this? I want to hear everything more about your story and 
now I see why this is so this book is so important and now I think our listeners do so we're going to take a quick break when we come back we are going to jump into we're going to fast forward ahead the wonderful book we're here to talk about today and how you too can make a difference in the world you're listening to Zeta Global Radio we'll be back in a moment Trice Massage Therapy and Skin Care is Southwest Florida's premier holistic and wellness spa to relax and rejuvenate your well-being. Founded by Lucille Trice, this enlightened haven located in Cape Coral offers a variety of massage therapies including Swedish, deep tissue, and trigger point massage. Trice offers detoxifying body wraps and facials using natural organic ingredients to pamper your skin and restore balance and health. Visit their Trice Massage Therapy and Skin Care Facebook page or call 239-672-0526 and book your experience today. Mention ZGR and receive a complimentary Ionic Foot Detox experience. Wow, thank you. Wow, Karen, I'm so taking in um, what you just shared in the first segment. That was action-packed. I felt like I was <laughs> in a movie theater. And then I actually, you know, have to think about my own life, as you said that, because I dealt with abuse as well. I was 8, and you're telling me you're 11. So that's a whole nother story. But it does make me think, once again, that certain people find each other and have certain callings and boy do I meet a lot of people who've had their own stories that have led them to do what they do and here you are another one so I'm so grateful to hear you now share what you are sharing with our audience and let me just let me just start by saying is this your first, or asking, is this your first book, your foray into sharing your gifts with others? Uh, this is my first book, yes. Um, I've already started the second book. But this is my first, and uh, I really wanted people to really get an idea of who Karen is and why I'm so committed to be, do, and having what I envision out there in the world. Uh, for others as well as myself and it's all part of the internal listening and guidance so what point were you saying I'm uh, this is what I'm going to do next because it's quite an evolution to go from divorce and uh, go through trauma personal and then your animals and at this point we're like you learn the lessons yourself and now you wanted to give them back to others Absolutely. Perfect. You know, for me, it's all about paying it forward. And yeah. in order for me to do that, I, I believe that I, ha- I would like to clear myself of all of this stuff. So this way, I've been through it, I've experienced it, and now I know what it takes to give it back and hopefully give it back to others so they get it in a smaller time frame than it took me. <laughs> That's what I always say. I say, hopefully others will get it with a smaller knock on the door, like a tap, than a big knock. All right, well, why don't we get into it? Why don't we start with the first key? Because you call them five keys to creating a ripple. We'll try to get through all five in this, the rest of the show. Um, do you want to start with the first one? Oh, yeah, it's identifying your strengths. Uh, become fully aware of your gifts, talents, strengths, and who you are for others. And I believe once you have an awareness, right, then it no longer has power over you. Then you have choice, the power of choice to choose to change or not and do something effective with it. I've, uh, I've had a game that I use called Threads, and uh, I've taken it globally. And one of the things that came out of that game session, I've always come back and analyzed all the responses I get and one of the first things that I notice, people are blocked or stuck, they don't have their awareness. There's an awareness missing or there's something that's keeping them from moving forward and they all want to make a difference and they don't know how to do that. So when I started looking at all these responses, it was like, wow, how, can I, how might I be able to change that, that thought process and support others in doing that and really support them in creating a ripple. And in 2007, it was almost like 
vomiting came out of my mouth, and it was just a download. And I said, I want mm-hmm. to see that change. Uh, you know, and I can't even tell you what the exact words were, but the word ripple came out of it. You know, I'm here to create peace on the planet through communication, to create a ripple through holistic communication or some such, to create peace within, which creates the peace without. And mm. uh, everything I have done has aligned with that ever since. And as I said, it was something along that effect, but you know, I've got it more articulated on my website, I'm sure. Um, so it was finding my own strength, and then now what do I do is have others find their strength, identifying it, becoming aware, and then fully owning it. And that's been a challenge for a lot of people. It takes time and patience. It doesn't happen overnight. You know, but with persistence and knowledge, it does. Well, I, uh, I love your book because it's, it's so simple in a beautiful way that it's so simply stated that it's not like this hard and fast, I have to study forever, how do I do it, how, why is somebody else, God, it looks like all these other people over there are doing it and I, I'm not doing it. You're, you make it so simple that it's everybody has this already and it's just simple techniques and them bringing forward that which they already know. They just need to activate it a little bit. Well, and I like you said, when you identify and leverage your strengths, you build confidence. When you smile, you gain an advantage in this process. And I, I think there's something really energetic about smiling. I've always said that. It's it's such a difference in how your body's like listening to that feedback mechanism just by you changing that. So when you talk about smiling a lot, actually, you have quotes and everything's in there. And I was all lit up about that. So yeah, I mean, actually, that became part of my get back program from the book. And then um, over the holidays, I decided that part of my get back was to give to Operation Smiles. Oh, you're kidding. No, I did. It was amazing. And it just felt it felt so good to do, do that because I believe in paying it forward. And every, I ended up giving them everything I made from the book rather than just a percentage because I just felt like if I can change a child's smile, you know, it changes the whole physiology, their whole well-being just within capturing a smile. I love to smile. You know, make me smile and I'm a happy camper. You know, so I can do that for others. I love the quote from Thich Nhat Hanh, you included, sometimes your joy is the source of your smile, but sometimes your smile can be the source of your joy. And that's so true. It's like when people say put on a happy face, there's a reason for that. But tying it back in to what you're saying in the first key, which is identify your strength, I think, um, at least what it feels like, is that your ability to to choose to smile or perceive something is also part of your strength too, is that you have the, the, the choice and the choice comes within you, whether or not someone upset you or um, hurt you or made you mad, like you have the choice. So should we go into the second key? We have time for that. How's that? Sure. Yeah. Collaboration. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Go beyond, go beyond connecting. Right. Uh, create synergy, invent new possibilities through uh, intentional conversations with others. I used to believe that I was doing life alone. You know, I could do it better, faster, quicker, and I really got, I was spinning my wheels. Mm-hmm. So I get that. I've learned to open my mouth and ask. You know, this scripture that says, knock and the door shall be open. Ask and you'll receive. And, and that really stuck with me. And I'm thinking, where in my life am I not asking? Where in my life if I'm playing small? Why wouldn't I want to collaborate with others? There are so many people out there that want to participate, that want to serve, that want to help. Or I like to, I don't, you know, energetically, I don't like to use the word help. I like to use the word support because everything, all, every word has a vibrational energy. So where can I support? Where might I support others? And where might... They support me. It goes both ways. So it's about giving and receiving, which is the universal law. I agree. And I feel that 
in the question that you asked in the beginning, well, why not? I think it's when people are stuck and they don't even know that they're stuck in their ego. They're stuck in the fear. They're stuck in je- jealousy. They're st- stuck, stuck in insecurities. They're stuck in all these things that they feel that in their story, that's it, end of story. You can create a ripple by just getting out of your own way and closing the book. Absolutely, especially when we're raising awareness amongst females. You know, in particular, you know, we're raised differently, at least in my generation. You know, kids were to be seen, not heard, and we haven't really learned to ask for what we want to need. And, you know, and then back in the 50s when I was growing up, you know, it was like my father was there to take care of my mother and take care of the family. And, you know, and it was just that generation of, you know, women are basically to be seen, stay home, cook, raise the family, and, you know, not question. And now we're living in a different age where, you know, empowering women, I mean, certainly it goes for anybody, and, but in particular, you know, I see women who are struggling to really set that terra firma and how do I do this or where do I go or what decisions and choices do I make and, you know, and the fear, the stories they tell themselves that no longer serve. It served you when you was a little kid, but it doesn't serve you any longer. When are you going to let it go? You know, and, and we have the power and the ability to do that, and sometimes it takes support to see mm-hmm. it because we, we're so stuck behind that veil. Yeah. Well, that's why there's so many networking groups and community gatherings and meetup groups, and there's just so many reasons to get together and share share. Uh, exp- I was going to say share story. No, share experience, share like-minded values in consciousness and uplift. And that's part of what we do here at ZGR is just do that, is empower collaboration so people can connect whether they're in the Isles of Trinidad or they're in Sarasota, Florida. <laughs> We're all one. So thank you for sharing that. We're, so here's what we'll do. We'll take another break. Uh, listen to our our wonderful, wonderful sponsors who help make this show possible. And when we come back, we'll go right into the third key of five ways to create a ripple with Karen Rudolph. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you. The Remedy is Albuquerque, New Mexico's premier urban day spa. Created with you in mind, The Remedy offers a spa experience that goes beyond the highest quality treatments and products. They're there to help you relax, regroup, rejuvenate, and escape a bit from your busy life. You'll feel it the second you walk in their doors. They have a distinct menu of Ayurvedic services and therapies to infuse a sense of peace and well-being while allowing you to enjoy a luxurious feel and experience. Ayurvedic lifestyle consultations are available and suggested treatments that include Shirodhara, Marma Work, Therapeutic Massage, Ayurvedic Oils, Detoxification, and Nourishment of the Body. For more information, please visit TheRemedyDaySpa.com today. Welcome back. Thank you for being here today. Karen Rudolph is here with Five Ways to Create a Ripple. We've talked about two of them. And now we're here to talk about five. Is there more than five? Is there going to be a sequel? Or you think this is five? These five that we're sharing here today are going to uh, get you going. How's that? What do you think? I think this is more about getting you going. There's always more. Because for me, I like to call it rippling up. And I teach from that space of expansion. You know, we're always expanding. We're always growing. We're always learning. And if you think of a spiral, we're spiraling up. That's going to be another book of mine, actually. But we're spiraling up. And in that space, it's, it's, it just gets so joyful and exciting. And Well, it's so amazing because one of the sponsors of our show here today is actually Teresina Martin Beckins. They are teaching the Sacred Spiral workshop here June 8th through 10th in, on Boquilla. Uh, or on Pine Island, but it is about spiraling up. And uh, more on that, you guys can listen to their commercial and see our info online. So let's get to uh, spiraling in ourselves in the key, the fifth, I'm uh, sorry, the third key. So what is the third key uh, to create a ripple? It's taking action. Um, it's taking, it's okay to take a, a action step 
any any action step beats taking nothing at all every time. So life is truly too short to hesitate. Um, it's really about putting the toe in the water and just committing, committing to doing something. I'm intending to put something out there or do something kind for somebody or just smile. Today I'm going to smile at five different people. That's taking action. But it's Mm -hmm. consciously taking action, consciously knowing that there's nothing in return. You're, You're doing this to create a smile on somebody else or doing any action step which is going to move you forward. Maybe it's for your own self-confidence, your own self-worth. You know, keeping it simple, which will grow into potential monetary value later on for you if that's what your goal is or better health later on for you, whatever your goal is. It's taking the first step, and the first step is always in setting an intention. You know, what do you want? What are you committed to? And then going after that action. I love that you said, consider trust is faith in action. Faith is imagination. Yeah. It's like, you know, your thoughts become things. And for me, you know, I can speak from my own experiences. For me, it was like, okay, how might I bridge this gap between seeing these people getting prescriptions consistently. I had the experience with my mom at home. Um, My mother had a low self-esteem. And all of a sudden, she got into painting later on in life. And I wasn't close. My brother wasn't close to her. So she had no one to share her photos with, her painted pictures with, excuse me. And she would go to the doctor's office and say, today I have a migraine headache. And the Doctor, the nurses would ooh and ah over her pictures, and then she'd go home with a prescription for migraine medication, and then she'd cr- complete another picture and then go back with her next picture, and she, her complaint being, well, now the medication you gave me is making me nauseous, and they would ooh and ah over her picture and give her another script. When I found my mother, she was 19 medications deep and on the floor, literally, by the time I got there. And I said, the book stops here. So I imagined myself being that catalyst for change. I saw myself supporting globally hundreds of thousands of people. And it just became like a life energy, a life force. And I, I had to take the – I didn't know where to start. I didn't know how to do it. And my background conversation in my mind was like, oh, my God, I'm not enough, and I'm stupid. I don't know. How do I do this? And I just had to really get out of my way and, and sort of just say, just take a deep breath and step in, you know. I mean, if I live in Florida, I go to put my foot in the water – Am I going to be fearful that there's a shark going to be in my big toe? No, probably not. You know, but I'm not going to know until I put it in there. And if that's what's going to happen, like how am I going to respond to it rather than react to it? And every time I settle into that space of responding, I'm able to take a clearer action. And mm-hmm. I use my imagination to drive that force and have faith and trust that that shark isn't going to bite my toe the first time I put it in the water. You know, do I get head deep in the water? Heck, I love the water. Am I fearful of sharks? No. I mean, I kayak, and people say to me all the time, Karen, what about the gators? I'm not fearful. I have a healthy respect for sharks and gators, but it's not going to stop me from moving forward because if I say that, I'm going to attract that, and that's not what I'm attracting because I've imagined Mm. I've seen it vividly. I love that. Well, that's, it, it's so important to uh, presence that, too. That's not in your field of reference, so therefore you're not giving it any energy. I, uh, I saw, I like the quote that you put in this chapter, and this is for people who are uh, big visionaries, uh, where you have been taking action. In fact, you probably take so much action. I'm speaking for myself. You take so much action, that's all you do is action, action, action. But you wrote... A true world changer never stops learning about how to become a better world changer. There's always room for growth. Taking action is the only way to grow. The stone must be thrown for the ripple effect to start. That's huge because it it, it never ends, and most people know that, especially when they keep going. But um, 
the, what stood out for me in that was a true world changer never stops learning because that's the thing is when we go into our, I think isn't it when we go into our ego is when we think we know it all and we're here to learn yeah so. and just a, a little tag onto that what you just fra- referenced is it's also the more actions we take the more it builds our self esteem and our self worth and our self confidence to take the next steps. So that's part of the expansion. It's always changing, always growing, always expanding, always evolving. Go back to the basics of it. Uh, Taking action can be something as simple as today I'm not going to watch TV, (laughs) right? Isn't that taking action? Or today I'm going to write down five things I wish I could have. I mean, we're talking simple, very simple things to move energy, if you will. And I also think that like in that that example i mean i'm just still thinking about that what you just said about your mom and the 19 prescriptions where where what part of her did not take action to realize that she was caught in it she had no self-worth no self-esteem yeah. no power she gave her power away to everything else and oh. that's what became my model for, you know, and they always say, oh, we end up growing up to be like our parents. I was like, nope, the buck stops here. And all of the energy from past, you know, from our parents, from our heritage, from our ancestors are all poured forward in conversation until we choose to change that and be the stop of change so it doesn't move forward. Mm-hmm. I think that's. I think you either are going to do exactly how you're, you were raised or you're going to do the exact opposite. I really find it's somewhere in the middle. It's either like, no. Any last thoughts before we take a break on taking action? You know, set an intention. Like, what do you want? Just get really clear with yourself. Like, what do you want? And then write it down. That's an action step. And then breathe it in and see if it resonates. And if it doesn't, rewrite it. And it's an action step. And then you choose what the next step is. One foot in front of the other, in front of the other. Well, and, and I, yeah, and I, and I love how it goes along with the collaboration piece is that once you take action, you find the people who can move it, who can move it into, move it into place or move it into position or uh, find the right people who can educate you further. I mean, there's so many things you can do. I think what we're just saying is for you to do is to get out there and do something. (laughs) My first step was to go and get support. You know, I didn't know how to collaborate with people, but I hired a coach and I found somebody who was further along in the process than I was. And then that begot something else. And they, you know, they got me studying something else. That everything I've done is aligned with my purpose, aligned with my intention. And anything that came into that space energetically that wasn't aligned, it was just an automatic no for me. Well, we have time to at least introduce the fourth uh, way, the fourth key. Do you want to intro- just introduce us? We'll take a quick break, and then we'll get into four and five on the next segment. Trusting yourself to be bold. Listen to your inner guidance. The journey toward having your dream come true life begins with the first step. I love that. Well, let's talk about what everyone's, how everyone can begin that journey when we come back. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back in just a moment. Sandy Wyndham is Florida's premier artistic photographer. Her passion shines through every picture she takes. Whether creating a series of artistic shots, headshots, corporate shots, or capturing one of life's most memorable moments, she just can't be beat. Consider Sandy Wyndham Photography. Visit her now at sandywyndham.com and let her know you're a ZGR listener for special discounts. Hi, Lainey Savante here, and I'd love for you to visit my new Facebook page for my private tarot and oracle session readings called Intuitive Wisdom. That's I-N, the number two, U-I-T-I-V-E, Wisdom. Conscious strategies for manifesting a more harmonious life. Don't we all want to have that? Let's see what's in the cards for you as we look at what needs to be cleared, expanded upon, and evolved. There's a lot to explore when we take a deeper look inside ourselves. 
Welcome back to Zeta Global Radio. We are here creating a ripple, and there are five ways to do it, and we are just being introduced to Karen Rudolph's fourth, Trust Yourself to Be Bold, Listen to Your Inner Guidance. Let's talk about that, and then we'll get into the fifth one as well. Yeah. Well, we all are born with an internal GPS system, what I like to call my intuition or my GPS. You know, we get into a car, what do we do these days? We plug in where we're going, and the car goes, whichever direction it's supposed to go in. Well, the same thing with your internal guidance system. seems to me that when I listen to my intuition and I listen to the feelings in particular that it, that is evoked by something in my space, it's like it tells me yes or no. Um, I, your body is a pendulum. You know, it's your, your, I don't have to go out and purchase, you know, pendulums and things to tell, ask myself, to, is this the right move or not? I can just be still. <laughs> but they're fun. <laughs> I know, I'm like, I love my pendulum. <laughs> no, but you're absolutely right. You're right. Yeah, and I teach people how to do that, you know, with their, their bodies. But before I even learned that for myself, it was more or less I had a sense of intuition, because it was a feeling. It was like, should I get married? Well, I don't know. I'm sort of scared. But, you know, the feeling is I love the guy. And yet, you know, all the questions. But when I got still, it was like my intuition said, yes, this was the right thing, you know. And, and yeah. I followed my intuition. You know, it doesn't project the future, but in the moment it definitely supported me. And it created a space of who I am today, so I'm very grateful for that experience. I bless it every day and, you know, and, and wish it all the best. I just, you know, it, it was a means to an end. It had me step up uh, boldly into this life. That I had no idea what that would look like, but I had, and not but, and I had to take the first step to, to fulfill that, that dream and, you know, I remember very vividly when I got divorced, somebody said to me, so Karen, now you're divorced, what's your dream? And I looked at them and I said, my what? And they said, your dream, you must have a dream. And I was like, no. And I literally went home and looked up the word dream in the dictionary. And I cried my eyes out because I didn't have a dream. There was something wrong with me. Oh, my God. You know, what's that going to look like? And I remember looking up after Truman got struck by lightning and I'm going, two strikes? Oh, my God. You know, two strikes, am I out? Sort of thing. And I looked at the spiritual meaning of lightning. And I had been putting it off for years because I was afraid of what I might read. And spiritual, when you, uh, lightning is all about being a calling that we have to be that light in the world. And hmm. I was scared because I was like, oh, my God, talk about being bold. I mean, that's about, for me, as bold as I could get. It's like... Here you are on radio teaching others to dream <laughs> when you didn't even know the meaning of it. I love the note to self. I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become, Carl Jung. So, all right, well, let's talk about the fifth key since we have time to do that and this is the fifth key in ways to create a ripple so go ahead let your gifts flow be generous flow is a giving and a receiving yeah that's always that's always challenging for a lot of people because we're such givers in life we just give 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 and then we forget that we don't know how to receive and then it feels weird and awkward because it's like, oh, I, I don't deserve that or I don't know how to say yes and, you know, and it becomes this whole thing. But when we create balance in our life, it's all about giving and receiving, giving and receiving. And all of a sudden, once I said yes, I had an experience during um, one of the hurricanes back when, the one that hit um, New Orleans. And I decided to go, I was living in Orlando at the time, and I decided to have my kids, quote, unquote, get an experience of giving, uh, you know, and I remember a minister was leading this program, and he said, how many of you, like, love giving, and I raised my hand, and we were sitting in this room that was like a C-shaped, and I was up against the wall, and 
closest to him. Moral of the story, don't sit closest to the speaker. Because he ended up picking <laughs> me out and literally jumped across the room and inches from my face. He says, you are robbing people of the joy, robbing people of their joy by not letting them experience your gift. And I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> So I started becoming a yes after that experience because, boy, that was like, I froze. I was frozen. I didn't know how to receive. I wasn't worthy. I didn't know how to do that. So I just simply, like putting my foot in the water, I just become saying thank you. Thank you. You know, simply thank you. Or no, instead of saying, no, you don't have to do that. So I started really getting present to my own gifts. And I remember the time... Uh, when I was meditating and I was with uh, in a relationship after my divorce and and uh, horse has always been a power symbol for me and I was looking at Truman who's fully recovered now and and I looked at Truman and I saw beauty grace peace and ease and I went oh my god that's me that's what I bring to the world I empower mm. people. I, I see their beauty. I see their inner value. I see their their gift. And I help draw that out with ease if they're willing to want to, you know. And it yeah. just has become a space of letting it, my gift receive their gift, and then it just flows. It's just awesome. Well, I think that what touched me in number five in the section was flow and fear cannot occupy the same space. That's such like, if I can say that a hundred times to people, you cannot have fear. If you want things to flow, you cannot raise your vibration. If fear is there, you can't do a whole lot. If fear is there, cause that's fear's job is to stop you in your tracks and put the dam up in the, in the river. <laughs> yeah, I always relate to nature. I always relate to nature, yeah. especially as being a sure. kayaker. If I'm going upstream, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long, hard, exhausting journey. If I allow myself to trust and breathe and be in the flow, I can sort of. I would always go on the river with my daughter. And we'd go upstream first and paddle, 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 and then before we got exhausted, we'd turn around, pull in our our oars and lay back on the kayak and just flow. And oh my God, it felt so incredible. And it really gave me a catalyst to look at my life and how can I be in this flow where it's peaceful and it's less stress and less stress causes less dis-ease, right? Because I'm still a catalyst for change about wellness, you know, and getting those stories out of our way. So we have that flow and that ease and being, you know, allowing our, our gifts to be out there and be bold and be our authentic selves. I mean, I think that's what it really is about is being our authentic selves because when we're our authentic selves, we become that ripple. We become joyous. Joy attracts joy. Joy is one of the highest vibrational energies there are on a spiritual level. So it's, it's not that challenging to get to when we're willing to let go of all that stuff that stops us and keeps us stuck and small and in our way and and you know what? I still get stopped and stuck, even though I but, but I now know how to respond to it rather than react to it, and I reach out for support. I have a coach. Yeah, I, have, I actually have three coaches. <laughs> and, you know, but I have a high standard for myself at this stage of the game, but it started small. I had no idea where I was going. I had no idea who I wanted to be. And it wasn't until I started looking and becoming aware of that that I was able to start creating ripples. So here we are. Do, we are uh, coming to the end of the show. Do you want to share uh, how people can get hold of you and maybe speak to what workshops and seminars and events that you do? How can people know how to get in touch with you? Well, certainly my website is just being reconstructed in the moment is www.tranquilsoulutions.com. For those of you who are listening, I will be happy if you were to email me at karen at tranquilsoulutions, T-R-A-N-Q-U-I-L-S-O-U-L-U-T, 
P-I-O-N-S.com. If you email me that you were listening, and I will be happy to send you a copy of that book. And it's a short book, and it's very power-punched. I love it. Okay, terrific. And do you have any uh, upcoming workshops that you do? or do you, Are you more one-on-one, or you do things in groups? I do things in groups. I do things in workshops. Um, I, um, I facilitate programs. I travel. Um, I actually speak and give lectures and uh, facilitate programs. I was just invited back to, I'm very big into the creativity community, I was just invited back to uh, Acre in South Africa, Acre it's actually pronounced, uh, which is one of the world's most prestigious creativity conference. Uh, It's all about thinking, I'd like to say thinking outside the box, but when reality is we use our imagination, there doesn't have to be a box stopping us any longer. So... Um, I'm always looking for creative ways of expanding this consciousness. So I've got lots going on, and everything will be posted on the website as it comes up. Thank you for being with here today with our group. Our listeners are all over. We probably even have South Africans listening. So I hope everyone really received keyword today uh, of Karen's wisdom here and the five ways to create a ripple. So thank you for being here today. And I have to say I feel very excited that you are uh, not too far away from where we here are at ZGR. And I I really want to meet Truman. <laughs> Absolutely. You'll have to give up the show. So I'd love to have you. And thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to your community and be a part of it. And I'm just absolutely thrilled that I can be that ripple for you and what your intention is as well. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Okay, everyone, have a beautiful week. As I mentioned earlier in the show, next week we meet two extraordinary, extraordinary women who have gone from trauma to triumph. And we really go into, very similar to this great story Karen shared today, a heartfelt story with her horses, of how sometimes gifts show up in very interesting packages that we hadn't signed up for. But nonetheless, we we move forward and move that energy out and see the blessings in them. So next week's going to be a really wonderful show, too. Everybody have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I wish you a happy Mother's Day.